Hold on, mommy. Wait for me. Wait for me. We're gonna go for a little walk. Get those babies moving. Hey, everyone. Amy here, 100 plus, abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida, with Mommy Angel. Going for a little stroll tonight. Thought I'd take her out and get her moving a little bit. She loves her walks. I've been monitoring her and watching her through the cameras. She's been sleeping very peacefully on her cushy bed. And when I'm done with this short walk, I will take her back to her room and continue filming so you can see if any of you that may have missed that we, good girl, mama, good babies. Um, definitely getting bigger. Her temperature is a little over 99 right now. Hi, Dina. Hi, Gloria. She's such a wonderful, wonderful soul. As I was driving here with Carol, Carol, I just looked at her at the camera to see what she was doing before we got here. And I said, look, Carol, she's sleeping on her bed. She said, she's such an amazing little soul. Amy, I'm so glad we saved her. And so am I. It might be a little dark. Just bear with me. Dark out. You gonna go poopy, Mama? Come on, let's go over here. And then we'll go back. Just a short little walk, and then we'll go in the yard. Hi, Maria. Hi, Jan. Hi, Allison Berman. She's doing really, really good, guys. Come on, let's go over here, honey. Cross over. Let's go on the grass. Can you go poopy for me? Come on. Go make poopies, mama. Come on. I'm right here. She's such a lover. Oh, Dorothy, thank you. We're doing well. Hi, Mary. Hi, everyone. What a day we had today, huh? I don't know if you followed our uh, activity today, but oof, today was a tough day. <clears throat> but I must say, for such a tough day, I can't tell you, and I've said it before through this journey of mine and my team, I just can't even, oh, the train's going by. I can't even tell you. I do believe God places in front of us what he believes we can handle. That is for sure. Um, I committed on taking a six-month-old Morky Shih Tzu Daisy after her owner in Boca decided she just didn't want her anymore. So we took beautiful, sweet Daisy into our organization. She was so scared and head shy. More peepees, good girl, mommy. Um, Let's go back. We'll go in the backyard to do your poopies because it's dark out. Come on. Um, took Daisy in. And then as I was taking Daisy in, the girl Dana, who brought her to me, um, asked me if I could take in a Bichon <clears throat> that was seven years of age. Apparently her so-called owner um, moved out and left her abandoned in the house. Imagine that. Literally left her completely matted to the skin, nails overgrown, fleas. And it what kills me to think what was going through that little dog's mind. So confused. And uh, so I committed to Chloe. And as she brought me Chloe, she pulled out a 13 year old Jack Russell named Angel, another Angel. And Nails overgrown, and I said, who's that? And she said, she was in the same house with Chloe. I'm on my way to take her to the shelter in Key Largo. As this dog is shaking in front of me, I mean, I can't even tell you, my heart was like just broken, completely broken, looking into these eyes of this 13-year-old poor soul, picturing her going into a shelter environment in a cage. I couldn't, I just couldn't. So I decided to go live and beg and reach out to all of you. And bam, all these offers to foster just blew me away. So I want to say thank you to all of you that offered to help. And a special thank you to Anna, our volunteer who took little Angel 
came running after work, picked her up, took her home. She checked in with me and said, she's such a baby doll. She's in her lap, cuddling, such a sweet little soul. And then Chloe, um, Zoe, our wonderful volunteer, her mother-in-law, took Chloe home. So they came running and picked up Chloe and sent a photo, which I shared on the page. Now Chloe's in a loving home, being spoiled and loved. Come on, baby, let's go inside. It's my girl. Hold on. Okay. We're good. Let me just make sure the door's shut. Hold on. Sorry. Wait. There we go. Leave it, baby. It's okay. Um, sorry, guys. Multitasking. I'm going to put the light on because we won't be able to see in your room because it's so dark in there. Come on, baby. <coughs> sorry, I'm still getting over this horrible cold. Sorry, it's cold. It's chest cold. <coughs> okay. Sorry. Um, but I have to breathe. So anyway, as I was saying, Chloe and Angel both came in today, tore my heart out, tore all of our hearts out. <coughs> and right now, instead of sitting in this rescue house or in a shelter or alone, locked, abandoned in their home, they're in loving arms and the room is empty. Um, on the other hand, we also have our wonderful Gracie took Emma, our English bulldog that we took in the owner's surrender. Um, Gracie and Bobby took Emma home after her vet appointment tonight uh, to see if it would fit. They're just going to try it out. No expectations. But the photos that I received from Gracie were pretty cool. Emma looks so happy laying in a big cushy bed. <clears throat> Uh, you missed the background story on who, Kathy. Um, are you talking about the dog in front of me? This is Angel. Angel's pregnant. Uh, she was an owner surrender. This is her third pregnancy. And um, she's getting ready to go into labor any day now. Any day. Seven to ten puppies inside of her. I know, baby. You just want me to talk to you. I'm going to cuddle with you. It's going to be all me and you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in front of me is Angel. Um, Gracie, yes. <laughs> Hi, Glenn Kaufman. Gracie took home um, Emma, yes, and she's trying it out. It's very, you know, it's very hard because they just lost their English, Stella, and it's a very emotional time for them. They've been going through a lot. It's the first dog they've ever lost, so... When they saw, um, we love her too. Everybody loves Gracie. <clears throat> when we saw Emma come in, Gracie just kind of lost it. And I told her she needs to keep it together and be strong. Um, especially when you take in an older dog. You know, you know the life expectancy of any animal. But let's be honest, none of us are um, guaranteed any amount of time. No matter what our age, no matter what our health, there's just no guarantee in life with any of us. Whether it's a dog, a person... We have to take each day as it comes and appreciate each day and just live it. You know, there's just no promises for tomorrow. All we have is the right here and the right now. Excuse me for one second, guys. Alexa, volume down. Okay, that was a little loud. Is that better, Mama? Yeah, I know. Um, Mommy Angel is beautiful. And uh, we took her temperature before we left. It was a little bit over 99. So um, it's holding. Oh, you're so sweet and kind, Jan. I appreciate that. Um, Mummy, Godiver, and Gage are still here. And enough is enough. They need out of here. Uh, they're losing it. Gage has started eating the couch and chewing it apart because he's, he doesn't want to be here anymore. Yes, and Angel is so much more calm. So much calmer for sure. I'm sorry, as I'm talking, <clears throat> I don't usually do this. Um, I'm reading all the comments, so I'm trying to answer everybody as they're coming in. Yes, uh, Joe, Kendra is doing fantastic. The veterinarian said she's super sweet. I'm going to be going there Wednesday morning and visiting and going live from there to visit her um, and show you all Kendra. Um, so that's Kendra. We also pulled another dog, which is an owner's surrender. <clears throat> she was so cute. 
and so sad in her photo of her intake of Miami Dade. And she's seven pounds. Her name is Ginger. And um, the updates from the vet's office is that they can't even touch her. That she's biting. She's a, she's just terrified. Um, we know we got the same update about Charlie. Hello, look at Charlie. I had him in my lap, in my mouth, in my face. Tongue up nose, tongue down throat. I got a dental every night I came in here. He couldn't get close enough. And he was snapping and biting at everybody there. So let's hope and pray that with our love and patience that we can show Ginger, little tiny seven pounder, um, that she can trust again and love again and that we're not going to hurt her. So we definitely have our work cut out for us with um, Ginger. You know, let me tell you something. Those shelters are so scary. I can tell you just walking into those shelters, I shake. Oh, good girl. This is what I want to see. Uh, we shake. It is just scary for us. Can't imagine what the dogs go through while they're locked in there with the obsessive barking and don't tell me that they don't smell the death and they don't know where they are. Um, with that being said, when a dog is taken out, like for us, a rescue, we take these dogs out of the shelter environment and then we take them to an animal hospital and they're put back in a cage environment for quarantine. You know, they're still in a cage. They don't know the difference. So... Um, I, we have seen time and time again, when we take the dogs out of the shelters and we bring them here to our rescue house, which is this calming kind of environment, um, with love and just everything that they need and kindness and no stress. As you can see, mommy angel is definitely feeling relaxed right now. Um, it definitely changes them. So that's what we're hoping for, for little ginger and dogs are smarter than you think i always say and carol carol and i both always say you know you don't have to analyze over analyze when a dog acts out or reacts or responds um to a certain way they're doing it for a reason and basically it's very simple put yourself in the dog's mind and body and think what they're feeling and try to figure out why they're feeling that way and what you would be feeling at that moment, um, and what you would do to correct it. So you don't need to overanalyze. I really think it's, it's just simple to be honest. Dogs are just the smartest, beautiful souls, most beautiful souls, which is why I dedicate my life to animals and not people. Sorry. Um, I love my people, meaning you. I love like-minded that share the same passion. Um, anybody that does not care for animals, they have, I have no use for them. I can walk right through them, to be honest with you. I've maybe become a little hard, just a little hard just because what I've had to go through and endure in this journey of rescue. But um, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. I will say God help the person. If there's a person, and I always thought this was crazy, but I've talked to a lot of animal lovers. Um, if I saw an animal and a person get hit by a car, call me nuts, or certifiable, I don't care, but I'm going straight for that animal to help the animal, and I will call 911 for that person. They're just so helpless. They can't do anything for themselves. They can't feed themselves. I mean, these people that, when I think of Chloe and Angel, the two littles that were abandoned today, um, you know, I just, they were locked in that house with, just in filth, and had fleas, and neglected how do you do that how do you live with yourself how do you close the door and walk away um and leave your babies behind and then start your life with your new girlfriend i don't i i just pray to god that the same thing happens to that person that inflicts such inhumane treatment on an, an innocent helpless animal my dogs are my children too pauline i don't have any human children um I never wanted them. I would, I, I would have twenty dogs, thirty dogs if I could. You'd go for the dog too. Oh, good. I'm glad you said that, Sarah. Now I don't feel as that crazy. <laughs> and yes, Shelly, karma, absolutely. Ah, uh, yes, her babies. Hi, Angel. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> No, no, no. Stay, stay, stay. Stay. Oh, you want to get clothes? She's crawling in my lap. It's okay. She's crawling on my lap. She wants to lay on top of me. Oh, mommy, let's... 
I, I'm looking really tired right now, and I don't believe I'm doing this, but sorry, I'm a mess. Okay, look, look at that. Oh, I can't do that on the live video. Okay, let's try. What? Let's put it down here. Okay. She just crawled right in my lap. I'm sitting on the floor. She just wants to lay with me and hold on. Can you show everybody your belly? Hmm? You want to show everybody your belly? She likes when I massage her belly. Can you see me? I, don't, I can't. Hold on. Let me get rid of the comments. Okay. That's better. So you can see her belly. Less so. Do you want me to move my leg from underneath you so you can stretch out, Mama? Come on in. Oh, good. This will be better. I can get a better video now. Carol just walked in. Sit down. Sit down, Carol. As you can see, this is what I wanted to show. Say hi, everybody, Carol. Hi. Um, we closed up the couch. That's her tail hitting the phone. We put Alexa in here with spa music. And we have her bed, which is what she's been laying in. And on the side of the couch, there's just a flat comforter. And over here is the whelping pool. We put a comforter and tuck the sheets really tight underneath. Oh, Hi, baby girl. Who's so pretty? Who lay down? Lay down. Come on. Lay down. Lay down with Carol. Oh. Baby, behind you up there is a thermometer. Can you grab it for me? I hope she left it up there. Did she move it? Is it on top of the fridge? Okay. So, um... I'm going to take her chance. Oh. Um, guys, I'm going to put the phone down. So you're going to see basically a black screen for a minute. Just bear with me because it takes two seconds and I want to take her temp, okay? So I'm not going anywhere. Just hold on. I got you. I got you. Mommy. Mommy. Ninety-nine point seven. Same. Hasn't gone down any. So when the temp starts to go down. That's when we know she is getting ready. <clears throat> right, baby? Not yet. Not yet. Could be getting close. Okay, it's all gone. Oh, Dan, you're such a good girl. You let me do anything to you. Don't you? Yeah. You let me do anything. Glenn Kaufman says, hi, Carol. Hi, Glenn. How's our girl, Glenn? How's our Lorelei? So great seeing you the other day. I'm sorry we couldn't sit and talk. We just had so much going on. We were juggling and running. But we'd love to see our Lorelei. I'd love for you to bring her so we could see her. What a great save. Carol the dog whisperer. <laughs> Carol has a special touch for sure. Good girl. That's it. That's it. Just relax. 99 is good. Yes, it's going down. Doctor said two weeks or less, so that was what? Three days ago? Yeah. It's getting close. Pauline, I feel better. It's just now the cough is in my chest, and um, it hurts when I cough. At least the cold part is gone. I think it's just I was completely run down, overdoing it, and but I'm, I'm strong, and I'm, I'm good, and thank you so much for asking. Carol forces me to drink this vitamin C drink that I hate. And I'm not a big water drinker, so she's always yelling at me. I'm iced coffee, and it's dehydrating. So I need to force myself to drink more water. <clears throat> Everybody drink your water. Honey with warm water. Okay, Susan. Susan says honey with warm water. I know, that's the trick, right? 
Um, yes, I am sleeping some. I I am sleeping. I just my mind doesn't shut off. Oh, oh, Angel. Oh, what are you doing, Mama? It's okay, baby. Oh. I know. Why? She likes that. It feels good. And Carol is a massage. Carol is a massage therapist. She has such an amazing touch. She knows the body like no other, so. You feel, if you hold them, you can feel the puppies kicking and moving. Lay down. Okay. She seems <laughs> distressed, right? Like in a little. She wants me to keep that in. Is that it? When you stop, she does that? Stop. Yeah. Let's see what she does. <laughs> she got you, Angel. Yeah. You can hear her breathing. We can let her out in the backyard. Albert went. Do you want to go outside? the best duty I've ever seen. I you took a picture of it. Good. Let her relax for a little while. She peed three three times. Mm -hmm. We had her checked for a UTI because she's peeing so much and it's negative. Thank God. She's it's just because the bladder is pressing on her. Um, and she's pooping normal. And what else? She's hot. We're negative. Thank you, God. It is. It's relaxing. Spa music is nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. We're going to have a lot of work cut out for us. We were talking about um, the puppies when they come. Oh, boy. We're going to come into this room and we're going to be uh, cleaning up lots of puppy poop. Yay, puppy poop. Could you imagine her going through another labor outside in the dirt? Yes, Natasha, Albert pooped, Carol said. Excellent. And a good poop. Um, and Natasha, thank you so much for coming tonight. I saw you on my ring on the doorbell on the cameras. So thank you to our beautiful volunteer, Natasha, for coming and spending time with the babies. It's so appreciated. Angel, Albert is just, I don't know what's going on with him. Um, he's just eating everything and anything. Um, first, he was eating sheets. He was eating his own poop. Um, you know, we've been talking to the doctor, uh, adding enzymes back to his food. Remember, he has no small intestines. Um, then we also added, added these pills that make your poop taste bad, so you don't want to eat it. And then he ate a whole entire cushion. Under the cushion, he literally tore apart the felt, the leather, and he ate half of everything and the stuffing. So none of that has come out of him. He has not thrown it up. He has not pooped it. Um, and I can't tell you how many obstructions this dog has had. We are beside ourselves. All of us are literally beside ourselves. So I don't know what's going on with him. Was he dumpy? No, he was great. He, he was happy? He went to the bathroom, wagged his tail, he sat with me. He was perfect, and the poop was excellent tonight. Okay. So, did you pick it up with a bag? Yeah. Wow. I had to. I That's You know why? Out. That's because he has an obstruction. When he doesn't have any obstruction, it comes out like a fire hose. When there's something in there clogging it, that whatever's in there absorbs, and it comes out more like a formed poop. It was a formed poop. That's why, Carol, because he has obstruction. So we're hoping that he can, because he can't be cut open anymore. There's just no way. We've already well, spoken. He seemed fine just now. Let's just and hope. He went in and he started eating. And I'm going to take him out again. That's why I want to take her out again, because I don't think. It no, happens. there's not nothing to do with his thyroid, guys. Nothing. It's just poor Albert. Poor Albert. That's all I can say. You're gonna have babies. <laughs> we're gonna thank you, Kathy, for your prayers. I just look at look at mommy how how sweet and you guys have to be getting so much out of this now isn't this the best to see her so at peace and relaxed because she's resting her little foot her little paw on you Disco's doing amazing, guys. This was Disco's room.
She loves this. I don't think she's ever received this in her life. She does. She looks like she's in heaven. Great, Glenn. I'm going to count on you for that. You're used to shit, right? When Glenn and I met, when he came to adopt Lorelai, who was a shepherd mix from Miami Dade Shelter, we'll save that story for another time. He came into the room to meet her, and he sat down. He got up, and he sat in a pile of shit. And he got up and said, hey, shit happens. And he has our Lorelai. And he just offered to help with puppy duty. Poopy cleanup. I'm going to count on you, Glenn. We're going to need a lot of help when she has We're going to need a lot of help, absolutely, when she has her puppies. Listen, this room, we actually used essential oils to clean and sterilize the floors so it smells like a spa in here. And um, the music and just all her comforts that she's never had. She, there's no question that she does not know how much we love her and how she is so safe with us. Seven to 10 babies, Kathy. And Disco is doing fantastic, Jamie. And Glenn is in. Mary, I'm so happy we can relax you. Just lay back and kick your feet up. Alexa, volume up. Good night, Mary Wood. <laughs> Baby, are you sleeping yet? I can. They're saying they're gonna. They're thinking you're gonna fall asleep before her. <laughs> We're gonna he, take mommy and give that our attention. He, yes. Uh, yes. Valerie Disco got adopted, and she's doing fantastic with her two new daddies, Dan and John. She's doing great. Oh. <laughs> Kicking? Yeah. You can feel them moving in there. Oh. <gasps> oh my God, you can even see them moving. Can you see them moving? I hear them kicking. See them? Watch. See it? Look what. Wow. Look. look. Oh see my them kicking? God, yeah. Look, look, there they are. See them Wow. Whoop. They're kicking away. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow. Oh boy. See him? Mm -hmm. Wow, look at them kicking. Mm -hmm. <gasps> <laughs> it's okay, mommy. Your babies are kicking. Look, 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 look. look, look. Right there. Oh, see it? Yeah, clear as day. Did 
I think you're putting the babies to sleep, babe. Mommy, do you want to go out in the backyard real quick before we call it a night, or you want to do it last? I think she's really comfortable. You want to take Let's mommy? Let's take mommy and get that. Let's take him in the backyard and let him run a little bit, and then we can come back for her. And come back for her and Albert, and then we'll be done. All right, guys, we're gonna sign off. Everyone have a beautiful, beautiful evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Sweet dreams, everyone. Amy and Carol with Mommy Angel, 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida.